Hey guys, welcome to lesson number two. We're going to be looking at analyzing the graph of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So uh, we were looking at quadratic functions, and we were looking at identifying quadratic functions. And so remember, a quadratic function is anything that has a degree of 2, and uh, anything less than a degree of 2, so ax squared, would not be a, a, a quadratic function. So this is the... Um, the forms in which quadratic functions can be written in you could have f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, or y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And something important is that a has to be greater than zero. Or sorry, well, yeah, it has to be greater or less than zero, but it can't equal zero because then uh, we wouldn't have a quadratic function, it would be a linear function. And another important thing is that the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. And so that means that the graph either is going to be shaped something like this or it's going to be shaped something like that. So opening up or opening down. And uh, whether or not it opens up or down, that will tell us a few different things. So if our parabola opens down, that means we have a maximum or a maximum point. If it opens up, it means we have a minimum or a minimum point. And we're going to look at an example that gives uh, yeah, that'll be a, uh, a good, um, good way to visualize what, what this actually means here. So our minimum or our maximum point is known as the vertex of our parabola. And uh, if we have a maximum or minimum value of our quadratic function, then that is going to define our uh, y-coordinate of our vertex. So we're going to look at this table over here. We're going to use... Um, the quadratic equation y is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 5, where x is an element of real numbers to fill in our graph. So first thing we got to do is, using our equation, y equals x squared minus 6x plus 5. We want to substitute our values of x into this equation and solve. So when y is equal to negative 1 squared minus 6 times negative 1 plus 5, negative 1 squared is 1, minus uh, 6 times negative 1 would be plus 6, 7 plus 5 would be 12. And we want to go ahead and fill in all the values of x, or sorry, substitute all the values of x so we can fill in our values of y here. So when uh, x is equal to 0, y is going to be equal to 5. When um, x is equal to 1, 1 squared minus, minus 6 is negative 5, plus 5 is going to be 0. Uh, x is equal to 2 is finished, is done for us. When x is equal to 3, well, 3 squared is 9, minus uh, 6 is 18, minus 5, sorry, plus 5 is going to be negative 4. 4 is completed for us, and 5, if we plug 5 in here, 5 squared, 25 minus 6 times 5 is negative 30, plus 5 is going to be 0. All right, so that's just a quick way to do it, but you can fill it in by actually substituting the values of x in there and just showing your work. But um, what we want to do now is plot the points that we've just filled in on this grid provided. So when, negative, when we had negative x is equal to negative 1, we were at positive 15. So negative 1, positive 15 is way up here. Uh, when x is equal to 0, we had 5. When x is equal to 1, we were at 0. When x is equal to 2, we're at negative 3, 1, 2, 3. When x is 3, we're at negative 4. When 1, 2, 3, negative 4, 4, we're at negative 3, 5, we're at 0, 6, we're at 5, and 7, we're at 12. So our graph looks something like this. Connect these dots. And it would probably be helpful if you could see what I was doing. There. 
So that's that's what my graph looks like. Okay, now let's fill in the blanks below. So the graph of the equation y equals x squared minus 6x plus 5, well, if we look at that graph, it is in the shape of a parabola. And it has a vertex, and our vertex is a minimum point at, let's see where our minimum point was. This is our lowest point, and that's at 1, 2, 3, positive 3, and negative 4. So our vertex is at 3 and negative 4. And we could look at our table of values to determine where our lowest value is. So our minimum point, or our lowest y value, is negative 4. And our value of x there is 3. So we could, we could make the inference there that that's my minimum point, which means my vertex is 3 and negative 4. Our parabola, if we look at our graph in this next example here, the parabola opens up. And since it opens up, it therefore has a minimum value. So a value that is you know, going to be lower than all the other values. Uh, the minimum value of our function is we're just looking for the y value is negative 4. And uh, the x-intercepts of the graph, so where our graph crosses our x-axis are right here at 1 and 5. And the y-intercept of the graph, where it crosses the y-axis, is at 5, at y equals 5. Um, the equation of the axis of symmetry. So what that means is if I were to take this graph and if I were just to split it in half, um, just like, like this, we want to know what the x value is that splits this graph in half so it forms a mirror image. So my mirror image would be something like, would be right there, where this side of the graph is the same as this side of the graph. So the x value, where I have an axis of symmetry, is going to be x is equal to 1, 2, 3. x is equal to 3. And the domain of my quadratic function, well, if I look at all the x values here, all these x values work. There's, there's always a value of x that goes on to my line. Now, if I were to extend this, this horizontal axis this way and this way, then, and conti while continuing my graph in this direction, I would still have values of x that would fall on this graph infinitely. So I could say that x is an element of real numbers. The range of the quadratic function so the range of our quadratic function is y values, remember have to do with my, my range, so y has to be greater than or equal to, so my, my minimum point was negative 4, and every value has, if, if it's a value on this graph, has to be above or equal to negative 4. Anything below it is not a value on my graph. Um, we're going to be looking at the less of this lesson tomorrow in class, and uh, yeah.